Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, I just have one simple mission to take care of, and that is trying to get a Kerbal into space, have that Kerbal EVA, and then bring that Kerbal back down. After that, I'll see how much time I have left if I can get something else done, but I'd have to assess the radon rocket. Um, we do have the navigator that's on its way to Mars, but I have to wait to see when the next transfer window is and what other contracts we have. So let's just get this done first. And so I'm going to warp to complete the Oliver on the Tiger 3, and we'll have to hope that all works out. All right, here we are with Valentina Kerman. And let's hope I remember how to do all this right. SAS on, throttle is up, got four engines. Okay, ignition. And launch. And the game crashed. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. Throttle up, SAS on. And ignition. And launch. Okay, it worked this time. That does happen, the crash on releasing the rocket. But not this time. I think uh, we have, actually have to leave Valentina up for a day. I'll have to check. There's definitely a world record contract that has that. Okay, going through Max Q. Everything looking good so far. Approaching 4G's. We're at 4G's, shutting off two engines. We are now on two engines. Continuing for another minute. Peak G load and stage set. And ignition. Ignition is good. RD0110 is active. Okay, should this stage fail, we should be now abort to orbit with the next two stages. I think it should be safe to discard the nose cone. Sure, okay. Off it goes. Taking a look at the supplies, we do have two days worth. We should now be able to abort to orbit just with the Asperis stage. So this engine can fail and the next engine can fail and we could still get to orbit. Okay, separation. And ignition. Okay, but uh, this engine is good. The S1 5400. I hope to unlock the RD58 soon so I can just call it the RD58. It needs to be between 190 kilometers and 474 is where we need to be at. Okay, and once again, I'm going to let this stage re-enter, so we'll cut it just short of orbit. Okay, very good, and separation, and ignition. And that is 240 by 234 kilometers, and we are in orbit. And orbiting, the orbit clock says we need one day and three hours, actually. One day and three hours. We've fulfilled all the requirements for where we need to be, but Valentina's got a ways to go. Got to spend some time up here, not just one orbit anymore. And 
EVA. It looks like we have to complete an orbit first and then do the EVA. It's got a completing orbit clock here. I don't know. Uh, well, we might as well do an, a quick EVA first. Let me extend the solar panels and such. Oh, the action groups didn't work. After all, if she's going to be here for a whole day, she's going to need power. Okay. And then I'm going to also extend the commutatrons. Just so that the pod, uh, the able avionics package can keep the pod stable while Valentina is on EVA. Now turn this off, set SAS to on. Okay, uh, <laughs> just in case I'm gonna F5. You never know. Okay, EVA. Okay, Valentina is nice and stable. EVA report. Okay, wow, 30 points actually. Keep experiment and board. Let's also have a crew report, but we've we've done that before. Okay, review stored data and let's transmit that EVA report while in space near Earth. So the EVA reports aren't uh, biome dependent. That sucks. Um, so uh, they 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 have uh, they have only one EVA report now in uh, realism overhaul RP zero I mean so we don't do it over each biome I guess that's why it's thirty science which isn't quite the same is it that's sad oh well we'll we'll get that thirty science guess it's a long report to transmit it doesn't go very fast okay it says it's done but this contract well I haven't landed but it doesn't have a little uh, confirmation mark on the EV report transmit thing so I don't know um, I'll have her uh, do another EV report later. And Valentina, EV report, near Earth, keep. It says 30 points. So maybe it didn't even do it. Uh, well, I mean, it doesn't tell me how many points, so I can't verify that it actually transmitted it all. Well, it's uploading data again. I don't know if it's gonna work though. Maybe we should just wait for recovery. We could easily grab a crude altitude record or something like that. But that would push us out of the zone for this human orbital thing, so. Which uh, limits us to below 500 kilometers. And we don't want to start the one day clock again. Let's see. Uh, well, perform EVA is fine. Now we just need to land and splash down. Okay, so that worked. Um, I don't know whether we act... Uh, well, it's reading some science points. 81.5 now. I don't know how much it's supposed to be, but okay. It would appear that our current solar panel situation is only barely enough to recharge on the daylight side, and therefore not really enough because then of course we can't recharge on the nighttime side so we need better solar panels on on the Oliver spacecraft than we've got right now tough to fit them on though but uh, that has been noted but I mean it'll be fine this time around she's not gonna lose electric charge within a day but for future reference Though for longer missions, we would also need more food, water, and oxygen. But, you know, I already have that sort of idea in mind. Okay. As we pass over the Americas, let us verify. Orbit's completed. 
We may fire retros when ready, it says. Okay, lander splash down. Now we just need to do that one thing. Crude duration record of a day is fulfilled. Okay. I'm not going to go for a higher altitude in order to fulfill that contract. We'll just bring her back down as safely as possible. Not perfectly safely because because we still have the g-forces this capsules descent mode doesn't work properly okay but on about well, at uh, at Australia as we practiced we will do the retro burn that's the Americas that's South Africa there's Australia. Well, I don't know if we'll really be properly connected with Australia. Our, our orbit has sort of deviated from that type of flight path. But anyway, we've got local control anyway. We'll just do it in the relatively same location. Though I don't know where that actually brings us down. I hope not the Amazon. It doesn't look like we'd go into the Amazon. But uh, we might land at Kuru. <laughs> that would be convenient in a weird way. You can see we've got a lot of fuel to work with. But it's still not enough for the moon. Though, and this is why I picked this amount, it is enough to get into orbit around the moon and then return back to Earth, just barely. Um, we, we like about a hundred or two hundred meters per second more on that but that's that's about what you need so if you had a launcher that could hurl you at hurl this at the moon this could get into orbit around the moon and maybe come back but again a little bit tight we might want something a little bit uh, with a little bit more Delta V and also we would need the food we need more food water and oxygen okay anyway uh, settling food settling the fuel down not the food down burning okay adjusting to 75 kilometers okay service module off capsule fuel unlocked if we can get that one unlocked yeah retrograde it's also got the reaction wheel too Double check the parachutes. That is right. That is also right. So arm that one. Arm that one. Okay, looks like we're ready to go. Gonna tell it to go surface negative relative velocity and roll actually 180. That's what I wanted. I'll try and have a sort of descent mode maybe. So maybe pitch 5 degrees. Um, I want a positive 5 degrees actually. Do that for me. There we go. Not much, but probably with our RCS we can't really keep it there for very long anyway just in case I'll turn descent mode on here I seem to move the capsule a little bit the camera automatically focuses on the center of mass so there was a movement of the center of mass okay ablation is occurring and we are approaching 90 kilometers. Pitch is still holding at 8 degrees. Capsule's getting a bit red. Okay, we are at 80 kilometers. The ablation rate is still increasing. Little pieces are still exploding elsewhere. It is clearly using our RCS in order to hold our pitch, and we've got about 
a third of our pitch authority occupied by making this 8 degree tilt. We could easily have put on much more powerful thrusters. We're obviously not using very much of our RCS fuel in here. But do we really want the whole descent mode thing managed by the RCS thrusters? And even so, it wouldn't be very good at it. We are at 70 kilometers. Ablation rate is still increasing. And we have flame effects. We have maxed out our pitch authority. And so I'm going to reduce the pitch while I can still control it. If I can still control it. Probably not. Yeah, I think I might as well just zero the pitch out because it's not really helping. Ablation rate is holding at the maximum and going down. 56 kilometers, 3 G's. We have 5 G's in climbing rapidly, 7 G's. Blader is almost gone, used almost all of it. Peak G load was 7.17 G's. Okay, G-force is diminishing. And... Gonna turn RCS off. Where are we? We are... Right off the coast of Peru? Or is that Ecuador? Right off the coast of Ecuador or Peru, actually. So we could have ended up in the Amazon. But I think we'll fall short of that, thankfully. Okay, parachute deployment. And there we go, 4 meters per second after full parachute deployment. And it's looking good for Valentina. And splash down and recover vessel. Okay, recovery of vessel returned from Earth orbit. Uh, parts 84%, not too far away. And crew, Valentina recovered, no experience gained. Oh come on, she went on EVA. And she was the first one to go on EVA, so that should have been some experience. Let's verify our contract situation. Okay, uh, looks like all the expected contracts were fulfilled. The only contracts we currently have active except for the automatic ones are Deimos Flyby, Phobos Flyby, Deimos Landing, Mars Landing. Which brings to mind the fact that we need to test that radon rocket again, right? We had engine failures on that rocket. Maybe I should just launch with a dummy payload. We've got plenty of funds. We could just test it uh, with a dummy payload and see if, how it works. It wants the Trinket 1 that was launched on the Atlas to be in an adjusted orbit around the moon. That could be okay, but yeah... Hmm... Let me see how long it would take to queue up a radon rocket launch with a dummy payload. Okay, so what I've decided to go with is a little 12 ton fuel depot. I've made it more complicated than I strictly needed to. I put a reaction wheel. I put an early controllable core there, and I've put two Delta Avionics packages. I don't think I need two, because it's only 12.4 tons. Um, but then again, the Able Avionics package doesn't provide much of a boost. We need at least 2.4 tons more than the Delta gives. It gives 10 tons of controllability. Uh, so I guess I'll go with this. Anyway, Antennae, I could have left off the RCS ports and the Asterisk engine, uh, because, you know, we'd just leave it as a simple fuel depot that something could access. I would want the solar panels so it could recharge, though. Uh, but if we take off the rocket, you can see that the cost of this is 7160 If I take off the asterisk, 
you can see that's about 300 and then these are about 140 so it's not that much and I've made sure to uh, attune these to Erizine and that's what the asterisk burns as well also uh, the amount of time that the asterisk adds to it is a day and 12 hours which I think is reasonable given the additional capability that having it on gives us if we take a look at how much Delta V it has of course it's just a floating fuel tank so having 5683 meters per second is not not bad uh, also we do have potentially docking contracts you know uh, we haven't really done a docking in space yet so that might be something else we're gonna try and so that's what I'm thinking about right now and of course having the fuel be the same as the one for the Astros engine means that the Oliver can dock with this if it has a docking port on its uh, on its bottom now it would have to have this docking port which is the junior docking port uh, rather than the the normal docking port but uh, this is the only docking port we have so that would be the idea well it's the only do regular docking port we have the Gina docking target and stuff like that but yeah so that's the idea right there I don't know if it's gonna work out or not but let's lock the fuel and so I'm gonna try and rate the radon rocket for a 12.4 ton payload as you can see and it has what appears to be more than enough delta V to do it. It could probably be rated for something heavier. Um, any other interesting points? Yeah, I don't know if the solar panels are going to be enough to... Uh, only if it's oriented in the proper direction will they be enough to handle the power requirements. Uh, we can see that the Delta AVNX package has 120 watts, so that's 240 watts there. Um, and then we've got four solar panels. I guess they'll be all right. I mean, these each uh, produce about 189 watts, so more than double what we need. I'm still thinking of Mars, I think. Okay. So yeah, it should be all right. Let's not stage the fairings at the same time as that. It's, it'll only take 76 days to build one. So let's do that. Let me save this fuel depot, and we will build. Of course, this is mainly to test the engines again, and there's a high probability that we're going to get a failure. So we're going to have to watch out for that. Incidentally, uh, the pace of things has really caught up with us. We were way ahead of the game until now. Uh, May 17th, 1965, we're now way behind uh, suddenly. And the thing that put us way behind is really the Gemini program. I mean, of course, there was the first EVA on the Soviet side, but uh, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be running behind on are things that were worked out during the Gemini program. And of course, having two people up there is a thing. And I don't think we're going to make Apollo time frame the way we're going. Uh, landing a Kerbal on the moon by the end of the decade? I don't know about that. We'll see, but we haven't even done an uncrewed uh, landing on the moon. Partly because we have our eyes set on other planets, really. Okay, let's try and launch this fuel depot. Okay, here we are again. SAS on, throttle is up. And... Everything looks fine. Ignition. And launch. We are going up. Smart ASS is active. We're past the speed of sound. Approaching max Q. And we should be through that now. One more minute on the first stage. This is a cargo rocket, so we don't limit the G-forces in this case. It'll top out about 6 Gs. Hold it at that pitch.
Okay, first stage was good. Set. And ignition. Okay, second stage has ignited. This is the RD0210. Fairing SEP. Fairing SEP is okay. Definitely can bring more payload than this up. We should end up with about 500 meters per second extra. And we're probably gonna complete orbit with this stage so that the third stage does re-enter. We're in space, so let's extend the antennae. I don't see them going out, actually. How about the solar panels? Solar panels work. Let me manually do the antennae. Uh, I think it's just a difference between the toggle and toggle antenna. I'm, nev I'm never sure which one to use. So, if nothing else, this could provide extra communication support, just a little bit. And when it finally... Uh-oh. Uh, we seem to have... Not perform... I don't know, what, what has happened here? Loss of thrust, not performance loss, thankfully. So our ISP hasn't gone down, but we have lost thrust. This is entirely okay. I think the stage time full throttle is still reading as if it had its original throttle, so maybe that's fooling me. So I'll go to 20 degrees. I should probably try and minimize that longitude of ascending node and try and match the moon, right? That'd be most convenient to be able to transfer directly to the moon with this. Let's see, how far off are we? This is only 8 degrees. Um, okay, that makes it go up, so let's go this way, actually. So, uh, a lot of things are happening right now that might throw off our initial calculation, but I'm taking advantage of the fact that we have extra fuel and even though we've lost thrust here, I'm trying to correct some inclination with respect to the moon. Our next stage should have plenty of TWR. Well, okay, not great, but certainly more than this. I'm half tempted to just dump this and move on to the next stage. We could do that. Yeah, I think it would be best just, I don't know, it's G the G's are going up now. It's not so bad. Well, it went off on its own accord. Set. And ignition. Yeah, it decided to quit on us in the end anyway. Just shy of its completion. Well, when test flight wants to kill an engine, test flight wants to kill an engine. We definitely don't want this to be a kerbled rocket. It's not Kerbal rated. Inclination is continuing to be corrected. We'll have to watch our descent rate. Difference to the moon, now 6 degrees. I mean, with at our location, we're really, really close to the descending node here, so we really should be able to correct almost all of it. Vertical speed is now picking up, so we're not going to be bad off for very long. With the delta V lost in the previous stage and the fact that we have to keep the severe angle, we're definitely going to run out of fuel here before we make orbit. We'll have to use some of the fuel from the payload to finish up orbit, but that was as expected anyway. And of course, I'm still using some fuel to correct the inclination too, so it's not uh, not a perfect test of the payload capability of this rocket. In other words, so what I've done is sort of a dogleg maneuver, though uh, one that I decided to do on the fly and didn't plan ahead of time. A minor one; it was only deviating by about 12 degrees to one side. Okay, five seconds before the engine is out. 
Okay, and sep and ignition. Oh, sorry. Oh, it might not ignite now because... Okay, I have to go back to Space Center and come back to it because I had the fuel tank locked before igniting and tried to ignite it and that causes a bug where it won't, it'll just refuse to ignite now. But it'll reset if I go back to the Space Center and then jump back to it. And since it has infinite ignitions, it's alright. It's more annoying when the thing doesn't have, when it has limited ignitions. Um, which one is the real thing? I think that's the real thing. Or, yeah, I think that's... But even with the second stage loss of thrust issue, you can see we are very close to making orbit here. Okay, um... There we go. And also I corrected inclination by almost 8 degrees. I don't think I can correct it much more than that, so we'll have to leave a 1 degree difference between us and the moon and be satisfied with that. So, was the test of the radon rocket a success? I don't know what to say. I don't know if we got enough data on that. But maybe for a lighter payload than this it would be safe just because we would have redundancy though we'd better have some extra engine on the payload itself to take care of things just in case. It looks like the RD-0110 is pretty safe as far as engines go. It's the first stage and the second stage I'm mostly worried about. Well, we have no connection, but there we have engine shutdown, 198 by 197. We've got solar panels out, it's recharging, we've got, uh, we've got the antennae out, uh, so we're good. Um, we've got most of the fuel here. So if we would like to use that for some other mission, we can. And on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.